In this lesson, we're going to learn how to create and edit our text. Okay, so I want to go ahead and add some text layers in between the layers we've created on our timeline that have the clips. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to come up here and grab my text tool, which is just defaulting to the horizontal type tool is basically what this is called. Now there's other options here um, where you can type vertically, but we're going to be using horizontal text for this project. So you can just choose the default there. And then we're just going to go ahead and click in the middle to create a text layer. Now I've just kind of clicked up into the side because the text I want to create is going to kind of write out like this and it'll end up being in the middle of our screen and we can reposition it however we want in a little bit. So the sentence I want to type here is when giving up isn't an option. So um, I'm just going to start typing that in. Okay, and we're not going to put a period in there because it's not really a complete sentence. Um, now what we want to do is grab our selection tool. So I'll just come over there and grab that. You can also hit the V key to shortcut to your selection tool. And I'm going to use my mouse wheel to kind of move backwards out of the viewer there a little bit. And then let's place this more in the middle of our comp. Now, if you run to find out where the true center of the comp is, you can use the title action safe guide. So to get that guide to come up, you can just come right down here to the choose grid and guide options button. Click that and then click title action safe. And now you can see we have a little uh, crosshair there. And you can just kind of place those two red dots that pop up on your text. Um, and that's pretty much going to put you right in the middle there. Okay, so this text is a little too small, not as interesting as I would like. So I'm going to use the same font that I used at the end um, for this clip this go faster and I used PF DIN for that so if you don't have PF DIN you can use a similar font which is going to be a sans serif font that has a condensed or compressed version so sans serif condensed or compressed are going to give you pretty similar results to the DIN font that I'm going to be using so if I just come back over here to edit my text the character panel is going to pop up whenever you create a text layer like what we've done here um, and you can just click right there where we have the name of the font and I'm just going to type in PF DIN and just typing in PF space D gave me the font that I want so the PF DIN text compressed pro um, and then the regular stance I don't think is going to be the best I want to have that kind of um, italic stance that we had before and I want it to be a little bold but not totally bold. Um, let's maybe go with medium. So we'll go with medium italic. And then also something that I think would be really nice is just to use all caps for this. So to do that, you can just come down here to this little button and choose all caps. So if you write it in upper and lower case, you can choose all caps. You don't have to go back and rewrite it with your caps lock on. Now also, I think this is a little small. So let's increase the size pretty substantially. Let's go in here to about I don't know, probably 105 or so. Um, and then I want it to be left aligned. So we'll go ahead and leave that paragraph option there for the left alignment. Um, but now I can't really see all the text. And really, I think that this is a little hard to read. So let's break it onto two lines. So we'll go back into our horizontal type tool and place our cursor between up and isn't just by clicking. And if you bring it right there to the end of that space. You can use the arrow keys if you want to navigate through with your cursor. I'm just going to hit the backspace key to delete that space in between those two words and then hit enter to bump it onto the next line. Okay, so let's grab our selection tool again and kind of reposition this right in the middle there. I'm just looking at that cross hair it gives me as a point of reference. That's pretty good. Now I think that the letting between these two lines is a little bit wide. So this is a pretty large space between here. So if you come over here to where it says auto and you have the text layer selected, you can kind of start to drag that and it's going to tell you the amount of pixels you have in between those. So I'm going to come up here to about, let's do a hundred pixels of letting. So 
gives it makes it a little more tight maybe feels a little more sporty um, with that letting being a little tighter there okay so I've got a hundred and five for my text size a hundred for my letting and I think that this looks pretty good with that medium metallic so I'm also gonna leave this white since it's gonna be on a black background anyway and I think this looks pretty good so let's go ahead and move on to figuring out where this needs to be on the timeline so right now when you drop in a text layer like this it's automatically going to put it at the top and it's going to have transparency so you can see through the text layer and you can see how it lasts the entire duration of the timeline which isn't really what I want I only want it to last in this first little gap we left for the text right there so I want to pull this down in my stacking order by grabbing the layer and pulling it down so that it's going to kind of be in that gap a little bit better since those kind of graduate down that's sort of how we're building this timeline and then I want this text to start right where this layer ends so I'm gonna hold shift to snap my current time indicator there and then we'll pull in the edge of that text hold shift to snap it in place and we'll do the same thing on the other end just like that okay so now you can kind of see how that works now something that's happening here is that one frame of this looks like it might be overlapping with our guy it's a little bit hard to tell so let's zoom in and see what's happening with the frames of the text and the guy here at the very end and it does look like if we're on frame 139 our text is on top of the guy's face so I wanted to end just before that and that brings me to an interesting point about frames if I drag this all the way out um, you can kind of see in here the numbers of those frames so that's frame 138 frame 139 140 and so on so a frame starts on the left and ends on the right and the next frame will start so if you have a keyframe or something um, ending it's not going to end until you're actually um, on the frame you see where this ends so this is ending on frame 140 um, when we dragged it so it was assuming that since we snapped to the beginning of this layer with our man when I held shift it snapped there then I told this to snap it thought that I wanted this to end on frame 140 because my current time indicator was on frame 139 so I'm gonna pull this back so that they just butt up next to each other instead of overlapping for that one frame so that looks a little bit better now okay let's go ahead and add the text for our other gaps so when you come in here you could use your text tool again but we might have to kind of start over with some of our formatting so something easy we can do is duplicate the text layer we already have and then change the words that it contains and simply move it into place so that's what I'm gonna do instead to duplicate a layer you're simply gonna have the layer selected and hit control D that will duplicate it for you then we'll just grab the layer and pull it down to the stacking order that we want it to have so it basically goes clip text clip text and then let's pull this into place so I'm just gonna hold shift and pull it to the end of this layer again um, something you might have noticed was even though I had my current time indicator here it knew that something else ended at that point so it snapped into place um, with this if I just dragged it a little bit closer to that clip and usually you don't have any trouble with those overlapping frames at the beginning you can see how those butt right up next to each other it's at the end where you can start to have issues so if I hold shift and snap to the end here then start to drag this and hold shift If I zoom in um, in this case it doesn't look like it had an overlapping problem so that's perfect we want it to bump right up next to each other perfect so let's just kind of scrub through here when giving up isn't an option We've got our man kind of running then we have the same text again so now let's go ahead and change what that says we'll go ahead and grab that horizontal type tool again and then just highlight all of the text and this time we're going to type in when only your best will do so go ahead and type in when only your and since we have three words there let's go ahead and jump onto the next line so I'll just hit enter 
best will do. Perfect. And this one's already going to be in the center since we centered up our other one. So that makes it pretty easy when giving up isn't an option, when only your best will do. Okay, now let's do it for our last gap here. And we'll just do our same method. So select your text layer, hit Control D to duplicate it. Doesn't really matter which one you move. We'll go ahead and move the one that has the two in it since we'll be overriding that one pull it down in our stacking order so that it is in position here. We'll just put that in place. Hold down shift if you need to. Um, and then it looks like this one needs to be trimmed a little bit. So let's go ahead and come in here. You can see how I'm kind of zooming in on my timeline by dragging this little slider here, the zoom to frame level. And we'll just pull this down so it butts up right next to and looks like it does on this side as well. Then you just pull this back out to see the whole timeline at once. Um, and this last one, we want to say rise to the challenge. So let's grab that horizontal type tool again, highlight all of our text, and we'll type in rise to the, and we'll just put challenge on one line. Now, because this one was so much shorter than the others, we probably need to scoot this over a little bit to the right. So I'll hold down shift to scoot it over and move it um, where it doesn't really move around a lot. So you see if you're holding shift, it's kind of snapping into place. So I'm holding shift just to keep that on that horizontal movement, just like that. So it's not moving up and down. Okay, that looks pretty good. So let's go ahead and watch what we've created so far with a RAM preview. So again, our work area is extended to the full area of our composition. See, so we've got all our layers there. You can just come up here to RAM Preview and hit RAM Preview. And it's going to start um, kind of playing in a little bit of an erratic way because you can see some frames cache faster than others. So now we're playing back in real time. And it's looking pretty good. Looking really good here. Then our text comes in with our shoe. Okay, so this looks great. I mean, it's a rough cut of just our clips and our text, but already we have a pretty general idea of what this little commercial that we're creating is going to be about. Um, so now we're going to start really fine tuning and kind of tweaking some of these pieces. And one of the things that I want to do is start to give it this glitchy feel. And I want to do that by adding just a few little shapes here that kind of come in on top of some of the pieces that we've already added. Um, so one of the things that we can add in is this transition piece that we have here, this AVI. So the AVI has transparency. It's going to be a little bit different than the other clips that we've brought in. So I want to use this in between the text and the man transition. So I'm just going to kind of come in with my current time indicator right in between those two layers and we'll drop the transition in on top of the two layers because I want it to cover up both of those. So we'll just grab this and drag it over and I'm just going to kind of put the middle of the transition where everything is covered up just kind of right there in the middle of it, the current time indicator. So you can see when I scrub now the shapes kind of come in and then our man is on the other side. Now I think we could probably give this a glitchier feel later on, but now we've kind of introduced some shapes that I think are very interesting. So this piece of footage has the shapes already built into it and it also has the tran transparency built in so it isn't just a black background. We're able to see through it and that just has to do with the way that that clip was rendered. So in our next lesson, I'm gonna start teaching you how to create shapes and solids. Even though this piece is pretty complex and pre-rendered, we can have a few shapes and solids kind of pop up over the top of some of our other pieces of footage just to help tie in this interesting transition that we've brought in that's already been rendered.